Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a square footing. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a suitable footing for a 400 mm by 400 mm square column. The column given is a square. So both of the dimensions are 400 mm. Transferring 800 kN axial load. The axial load P is 800 kN and a movement of 40 kilonewton meter. The movement M is 40. The safe bearing capacity of the soil is 190 kilonewton per meter square. QS is 190. Use M20 concrete and FE 415 steel. FCK is 20 and FOE is 415. We need to adopt limit state method of design. Let us see an alternative question with a small change. In this question, the movement is not given but the eccentricity is directly given. Same steps should be followed for this question also. We know that the first step in the design is to find the size of the footing. Load of the column is given in the question as 800 kN. Let us assume that the sulphate of the footing as 10% of the total load so that we will get 80 kN. Then we have to find the total load we need to add the load of the column and sulphate of the footing so that we will get 880 kN. Footing area will be W upon QS. We can apply both of them so that we will get the area as 4.6315 meter square. We are going to design a square footing. So the area will be B square. To find B, we have to take root of area. In this way, for the breadth, we will get 2.15 meter. Let us round this as 2.2 meter. So let us provide a square footing of size 2.2 meter by 2.2 meter. We need to find the soil pressure. That will be P by area. P is the load given in the question as 800. Area is side into side. That is 2.2 square. In this way, we will get this soil pressure which is less than the safe bearing capacity of soil. So the size of the footing is adequate. We need to find the factored soil pressure. With this we have to multiply 1.5 so that we will get this. Now we have to find the eccentricity E. The formula is movement upon load. Movement and load are given in the question. We can apply both of them. In this way for the eccentricity we will get 0.05 meter. If the eccentricity is given in the question, this step is not required. Let us take the plan of the column with the footing. If there is no eccentricity, both of them having the same center. The breadth of the column is 400 millimeter, 400 by 1000. We will get in meter, 0 0.4 meter. So this breadth is 0 0.4. So from the center on the left side, we will have 0 0.2 meter. And on the right side, we will have 0.2 meter. But we have the eccentricity of 0.05 meter. So from the center, we have to move the column towards the right side by 0.05 meter. Now this is the center of the footing. And this is the center of the column. This is the center line of the column. On the left side, we will have 0.2 meter. And on the right side also, we will have 0 0.2 meter. This 0 0.2 minus this eccentricity, which is 0 0.05, we will get this distance, which is 0 0.15. There are two projections from the column. This is the larger projection and this is the smaller projection. We need to find the larger projection. This is the center line of the footing. From that, the distance should be 2.2 by 2 minus 0 0.15. We will get this distance, which is 0 0.95 meter. Now, we need to find the factored bending moment. Using this formula, we can find that. We have already calculated the factored soil pressure. We can apply that. And just before, we have found the larger projection, that is L. For the bending moment, we will get 111.9 kN meter per meter length. Our FOE is 415. So to find the effective depth D, we have to use this formula. 
In the previous designs, I have explained many times how to derive this formula. For the breadth, we have to take unit breadth, that is 1 meter. 1 meter will be 1000 millimeter. FCK we know, we can apply that. Just before we have calculated the movement, we can apply that. For the effective depth D, we will get this, but this is a small value. The footing may fail in one-way shear or two-way shear. In this case, we have to increase the effective depth. Randomly, I have kept the effective depth as 400 mm and the overall depth D as 450 mm. Using this equation, we can find area of the tensile reinforcement AST. In the equation, we can apply all of the values so that we will get this equation. Using a calculator, we can solve this equation. For the AST, we will get this. Alternatively, if you can memorize this formula, we can get the AST directly. After applying all of the values, we will get this. We need to check for minimum AST, that is 0.12% of cross-sectional area. So 0.12 of BD. For B, we have to apply unit breadth, that is 1000 mm. And the overall depth, we have assumed that to be 450 mm. For the minimum AST, we will get 540 mm square. But the calculated AST is more than that. So we have to proceed with this AST. Let us provide 12 mm diameter bars. To find the number of bars per meter length, we have to divide the cross-sectional area of the steel bar by this AST. AST will be equal to pi d square upon 4. Here d is 12. So it will be pi into 12 square upon 4. For the number of bars, we will get 7.15. We can round that to 8. So the spacing per meter length will be 1000 upon 8. It will be 125 millimeter. We can round this as 120 millimeter. So let us provide 12 millimeter diameter bars at the spacing of 120 millimeter both the ways. Now we need to find the provided AST 1000 upon the spacing 120 into AST. For the provided AST, we will get this. Now we are going to apply the check for shear stress. First let us do that for one way shear. The critical section for one way shear is located at a distance of D that is the effective depth from the face of the column. This is the face of the column we have to select. This is the critical section. It is located at a distance of D from the face of the column. We need to find the ultimate shear force. The formula is QU into area. QU is the ultimate soil pressure. We have already calculated that is 247.95 kN per meter square. We have to find the shaded area for 1 meter length. This distance we have already calculated that is 0.95 minus D that is the effective depth. We will get this distance. So this distance will be 0.95 minus the effective depth 0.4. Also we are calculating the area for 1 meter length. So the area is 1 into 0.95 minus 0.4. For VU we will get this. Now we need to find the shear stress tau V. The formula is VU upon BD. For B we have to take unit breadth. D is the effective depth. VU we have calculated, but we have to apply that in Newton. 1 kilo is 10 power 3. For tau V, we will get 0 0.34. For 100 AST upon VD, we will get 0.235. Now we have to take the table number 19. 100 AST upon VD is 0.235. It comes between 0 0.15 and 0 0.25. Our FCK is M20. So we have to select these two values. By using interpolation, we can find tau c for 0 0.235. We will get 0.348. Then we need to find k. For the overall depth more than 300, the value of k is 1. Tau c into k, we will get 0 0.348. 
for tau v we have got 0.34 tau ck is greater than tau v so it will be safe against one way shear we are going to apply the check for the two way shear the critical section for two way shear is located at a distance of 0.5d from the face of the column so from the face of the column at a distance of d upon 2 or 0.5d we have to make this diagram since the column is square this shape also should be square we need to find this distance we know the side of the column it is 0.4 with that we have to add d upon 2 and then d upon 2 the effective depth is 0.4 so it will be 0.4 upon 2 and 0.4 upon 2 when we add these three we will get a 0.8 meter if this side is 0.8 this side also should be 0.8 because it is a square we need to find the nominal shear stress the formula is b upon b naught d b naught we need to find that is the perimeter of the square we know that the perimeter of a square is 4 into side so 4 into 0.8 we will get 3.2 meter we need to find the shaded area that will be 2.2 square minus 0.8 square we have to find the shear force the formula is q u into area q u we know just before we found the area in this way we will get this just before we have seen the formula for tau v for b naught we have got 3.2 meter we can convert that into millimeter and just before we have calculated v u 1 kilo is 10 power 3 in this way for tau v we will get a 0.82 when shear enforcement is not provided the calculated shear stress at the critical section shall not exceed ks tau c ks is 0.5 plus beta c beta c is the ratio to short side to the long side of the column we have a square column the ratio will be 0.4 upon 0.4 for ks we will get 1.5 but ks should not be greater than 1 in this case we have to keep ks as 1 now we need to find tau c that is 0.25 in the root of fck our fck is 20 for tau c we will get 1.11 for tau c ks we will get 1.11 because ks is 1 tau v just before we have calculated tau v is less than tau c ks so it is safe against two way shear here you can see the reinforcement details now we are going to end this session Thank you for watching this video.